So uh, welcome everyone. My name is Lexi. I'm joined here um, by a couple of my colleagues from Learn. This is our um, fourth come along this year. So we've already done Microbit. We did um, Makey Makey. We've done Turtle Art. And now we're looking at Scratch Junior and Scratch. Um, and this is going to be a fairly introductory um, exploration of uh, coding with both Scratch Junior and Scratch. And you'll see we've planned it in a way that no matter what level you are teaching at and no matter what subject you're teaching at, you will hopefully walk away with something that um, you can use wherever you are. Um, so I'll just go ahead and um, look through our agenda for the next hour that you'll be with us. So um, just after this, we'll hop into Scratch Junior. So hopefully you have a, an I, um, a tablet or mobile device that you can load the Scratch Junior app onto and play along with me as I go through the um, activity. But if not, you can watch and um, play with it later when you have a chance. Then next, we'll hop over to Craig, and Craig will show us um, some similar things that you can create um, in Scratch. So that's on the um, website. And then we'll finish off with Stacy, who will take us a little bit further with Scratch. And then we'll have time for some resource sharing and any further questions. Um, but if you have questions at any point throughout the uh, Code along, you can go ahead and put those in the chat or go ahead and unmute yourself. Just as a side note, we are recording this uh, presentation just so we can have it as an additional resource for future use. Um, so if ever you don't feel comfortable, you can turn your camera off or whatever, okay? So what I'm gonna do is actually gonna hop out of here because the point of a code along is to actually go ahead and do it together. So I'm going to transfer you over to this camera and there's my iPad and I have um, Scratch Junior on my iPad here. So what we're going to do today say is we're going to play with creating basically uh, flashcards. So we thought that flashcards would be kind of a great activity because Again, they can be used at multiple levels, uh, multiple age groups, and also within multiple subjects, um, whether that's an, a language class, a math class, science class, and so on. So in Scratch Junior, what that could look like, what I'll do is I'll show you an example um, or two, and then we can go ahead and you can code alongside with me, and I'll go through the steps of how I created the project. So here's one example and I will go ahead and make it big. So we say flashcards, I'm gonna use the term flashcards kind of loosely for today. Um, what I've created here is just an example of three circles. And essentially I have three different examples of how you could bring this as a kind of vocabulary activity. So the first one is if I tap on it, Red. You can hear an audio recording where I've recorded my voice saying the name of the color. If I tap on this one, it pops up and it's written in a little speech bubble. And then the final one, I tap it and I can change it to have it written. And I've just drawn that sprite myself. So it's very simple. Um, I'll show you, I did a very similar example. Whoops. with shapes. So it's again, a very similar thing. Square. Oh, and I forgot to change that. It's a circle <laughs> and it's written triangle. It's hard to see in yellow, but you kind of get the idea hopefully. So if we're gonna go ahead and create that, and this is the part where you can kind of join me in my Scratch Junior app, I can go ahead and create a new project. Okay, and this is our our platform for 
for Scratch Junior. And Scratch Junior is really great for um, our preschool and cycle one elementary. Um, but I've even used it with cycle two elementary um, and sometimes with some special needs students. And it's really easy to get started because it's largely visual. Um, and so, you know, anyone who is really new to coding will find it really easy to get started. So here I am. Um, right now I have the scratch cat and I don't I don't want to use scratch cat. So I'm going to go ahead and just press and hold and I can see the X now to remove scratch cat. And if I want to go ahead and create those kind of color word vocabulary flashcards, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add each one as its own sprite. So I'll add a sprite and you can see I have a whole bunch here because these are ones I've already created. But I have the option, if I didn't want to select any of the um, images already in the app, I can go ahead and select up here the paint and create my own. Whoops. Let me go back a second. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and create the paint. And I can select any shape or um, even draw what I would like. I'll just go ahead and do some circles and let me do a nice green one here. And I can fill it in the same color. So that's pretty easy. I can even give it a name. So we're doing color words. So I'm going to type what the color is. And there's my first sprite. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, two more, but you could do as many as, as you want. So I'm going to take the same one but I'm going to change it and a final one. I'm going to change this one to be purple. We'll do the secondary colors. And actually I should at the same time, if I'm going to name them. So if you're following along, hopefully you have a couple different splotches of color, whether they're circles or squares, it doesn't necessarily matter. So um, I'm going to show you the first option, which is to use audio recording. So this is really great if you uh, want to hear students presenting and speaking the words, but you don't necessarily have time to, you know, sit down um, with each one individually. This is a great way to, you know, after everyone's left for the day, you can go back and listen and 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 hear what they're saying. So to do that, um, when you what you saw in my demonstration was that I tapped on the sprite to make something happen. So the event block that we're going to use today um, is the one that says when I tap on it. So in my yellow here is where I have my events. Um, and often we might use the green flag, but for today we're using especially when I tap on the sprite. So when I tap on the sprite, I said I wanted to record something. So that's going to be in the sounds. And right now there's a pop noise, but I want to record my own voice. So I'm going to open up the microphone and it brings up this option to record. So I can go ahead, there's the record button, stop and play. It's a little bit hard to see um, in the screen, but if you have it open, you'll, you'll see it for yourself. And this was the color green. So I'm going to go ahead and record green and I can play it. Record green. Okay, so I, I caught myself speaking a little bit. So since I don't like that, I can just re record right away. Green. And then I hit stop and green. Much better. I'll go ahead and click that check mark. And now it has added that little recording to my uh, sounds and noises I have available. So I can drag that down. And that's all the coding that is needed. So I can hit. Green. And it's going to work. And if I open it up full screen. Green. Easy peasy. All right. So the next one let's do for orange. Again, now I'm coding on my orange block. So this was green. And for each sprite, I need to add the code to it um, individually. So again, I'm going to grab that same event when I press on the sprite. This time, um, as you saw in the example, we could add it in a kind of speech bubble. So I'm gonna do that right here. And you can see in the purple, I have speech bubble. 
So when I click on it, right now it says hi. But I don't want it to say hi, I want it to say the name of the color. So. Orange, okay. So for now I have green and orange. And then the final one that I showed in the beginning example was um, to have it actually change. And so to do that, it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm actually gonna go ahead and create a fourth sprite for this. So I'm gonna take the same one I had, but I'm going to make it white. And then with this top little squiggle line, actually, I can actually draw free form. So I'm gonna use that to write the word purple. And students have a lot of fun playing in this paint function of Scratch. Um, it, I have found that it's pretty intuitive for them. And I'll put this as like purple two. Okay, I'm gonna layer it over here, but I only want it to appear when it gets clicked on. So what I'm actually gonna do is in my purple bar here, I have the option to make it disappear. So you can see this, person is kind of invisible. If I tap it, it's going to make that sprite disappear. I can get rid of that for now. I'm gonna come back to my original purple. I'm gonna create an event for it. Again, my event is gonna be when I tap on the sprite. What do I want to do? Is I want to trigger um, this one to disappear and also make the other sprite appear. So this one I want to disappear. And I want it to send a message. I want it to communicate with the other sprite I've created. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this little envelope, which represents kind of sending a message. Um, and right now it's orange, but maybe since I'm using purple, I'll, I'll make it a purple envelope. So right now, if I tap on it, it's gonna disappear, but nothing else is going to happen. It's gonna send that message, but the other sprite needs to receive that message. So for the other sprite, it's going to be the event when the message is received. And if it's if I've changed the previous one to purple, this one also needs to be purple. Now I want my sprite to appear. So if I click the green flag and start over, when I tap on my purple, it should first disappear. Then next, it will send a message to this sprite to appear. So hopefully that works. Exactly. And so if we look at it full screen, if I tap purple, the first one disappeared, the second one appears, and that's exactly it. So we have our three options. Green. Orange and purple. All right, so I'm just looking at the time. Okay, so I did have, are there any questions about that so far? before I kind of continue. Okay, so I did have one kind of, as I was playing with this, I had an idea for a project and it's it's kind of still in a, like beginning forms, but I thought something that you could do with your students to kind of take it faster. Um, oh, sorry, Mary, I can slow down. <laughs> Just give me a heads up if I'm going too fast. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want you to slow down because, you know, there are many people are at different levels. I'm just letting you know that if I were to do this with uh, a kindergarten class, um, I guess I'm at the five-year-old stage. You know, you have to treat me like a five-year-old. So, uh, but, you know, I can play after and there's no way, you know, unless it was a one-on-one -on -one tutorial, there's no way you could... Uh, sort of serve my needs and everyone else's. So I, it's no criticism at okay. all. I don't know where I am. <laughs> um, and I think if if I were to do this with students, I wouldn't necessarily show I wouldn't necessarily show them all three ways right away. Oh, right. I, yeah. I would probably show them one of the ways, depending on like, do I want to look at how they're spelling the word or do I want to look at how they're pronouncing the word um, and so on. And and so I would show them one way and then, you know, potentially move on from there. Um, yeah, no, I, I realize that. Okay. That, that's I just, we're and trying I, to pack in, 
We're trying oh, to pack yeah. a lot of stuff in, in a one hour time span. So. Oh, and I, I can certainly review the, the video later. Oh, so. awesome. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, if anyone else has questions or if I am going too fast for anyone else, then let me know for sure. Um, like I was saying, the idea I kind of had started to float around in my head as, as a way to, to, to take this further um, is there's another option. So this one I started working on and I haven't done any coding to it yet. Um, but if I make it a bit bigger, I'll kind of zoom in here manually. So you can see um, I've taken photos of real life objects that are rectangular. I was focusing on shapes. Um, so different rectangle, uh, rectangular shapes in my house. And I thought you could create a similar project where you then add that coding for, you know, saying it's a rectangle or a circle or a square and, and having the students, you know, walk around the school or their classroom and, and find real life objects that are in those shapes or those colors or whatever other category you might want to use. So I'll I'll show you real quickly just the the photo photograph element, um, and then I think we'll be ready to move on to Craig in just a couple of minutes. So, um, again, back in my my main home for Scratch Junior, I want to create a new project. I again I don't want Scratch Cut, so I just press and hold, and the little X appears, so I can delete, and I have my blank canvas. So again, I'm going to create my own sprite. And to do that, I'm going to go paint and it could be any shape. Again, it could be, maybe it's a circle this time. I showed you an example with rectangles, but there's my circle. And instead of filling it in with the paint bucket, which I could do, I want to fill it in with a photograph. So I can go ahead and click the camera and tap right there. And let's see, oh, I have a hair elastic. This is a circle or circular, let's say. So where is it here? There we go. So there's the photo I've taken of my hair elastic. And now I have it in my um, project. And just like we did before, again, when I click on it, I could make it say circle. Circle. Okay, that's good. And so I can pop that. And when I click on the photo of a circular object, Circle. So you could make it into a fun little kind of search and find in the classroom um, and get students up and out of their seats and exploring that way. Um, very cool. So I'll show you the next step kind of is moving into Scratch. So I'll share my screen and get over to. So that's just the slideshow. So you can join me uh, if you're going to scratch along. I'll try not to go too fast, but if you go to uh, scratch.mit.edu, so I'll, I'll open that tab over there, you'll get to something that looks like this. And what I'm going to do is go to create this part right here. So I'm going to create something with you today. And similar to what Lexi did, we'll use colors and make some pretty straightforward things. So there's our our project. Um, I'm going to give it a name for today. My mouse is not co cooperating. I'll just call it ball colors, something along those lines. Um, just hit enter. There we go. Um, and you can see I'm already logged in. My um, and my name is in there. And you don't have to log in for today necessarily, but it is a good idea to have a, an account um, if you're going to be working in Scratch, it makes things easier. And like Lexi before, I'm going to delete the cat. I'm not going to use this sprite as it's called. So I'll just click on the X right there and the cat is gone. And what I'm going to do is choose a sprite. So I'm looking for a ball like we had before. I'll click on the cat to sprite. I have some choices. There's some themes up here based on the whole library of images that I have. I'm just going to use this ball, and you can see when I mouse over it, it's changing colors for me. So I, I know there's there's already costumes for this particular one. I'm going to use that one. I'll click on it. There we go. Um, so we have a ball as our first sprite. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in the costumes. If I go over to this tab, so you have the code tab where all your blocks are, just like in Scratch Junior. 
and then you have costumes. So this particular ball already has a whole bunch of costumes that it could change to. So I, I'm going to take advantage of those. Um, you could have brought an image in a, a different ball each time. Um, you can use a draw feature also and draw in those like Lexi did with uh, Scratch Junior. Um, so there it is. Um, one thing I'm going to do is name this particular ball. So it's called ball A. I'm just going to put yellow in here. Yellow. And later I'll show you how to create a blue one, a pink, and so on. And we're just going to label them to keep them organized. So that's going to help with our, our coding after. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is duplicate that sprite. Right, so let me take you over here. I'm going to go back to the code block just so I have my blank canvas. This little grayish yellow ball there tells me that I'm in that sprite, the yellow ball that's right there. Um, and I know I'm going to create several colors. So maybe for today's code along, we'll just do two or three different colors. So I'm going to right click on the ball and duplicate. So I've du duplicated the sprite. You can see now there's two yellow balls on here. And while I'm on that sprite, it's a bit confusing because they're the same, I'm going to back over to my costumes tab here. And you'll see uh, there it is again, the, the ball like we had before. So this time around, I'm going to use the blue one down here. So you see the trash can up here with the yellow uh, costume for the ball. I'm just going to delete it. There we go. We have the blue one. And while I'm here, I'm going to delete the other ones too, just to clean this up. So I delete the one was it the green one, one left. And like before, I'm going to name this one. So it's already ball B. I could always delete it and start again, but I'm just going to put blue next to it. There you go. And we could do that for the other balls as well, but we we'll do that for. I'm going to go back to some coding now just to show you how to get started. So again, blank canvas. I'm going to go to the yellow ball here, my sprite. There you go. Again, a blank com uh, canvas. And what I'm going to do is create an event for this ball because we're going to make like a flip card, right? So I want when I click on the ball like Lexi did, something's going to happen. Either the name will pop up or we could record something or have something like that happen. So what I'm going to do is go to the event block right here, these yellowish ones. And this is a good starter. It's a starting block. When you see the hump on top, unlike these puzzle pieces down here, so the hump on top tells me that it's an initiate block. It's how I get started with a program. And when I click on the green flag, that program is going to be executed. There's the green flag up there. So there's my event block. Um, and we looked at costumes before. So again, I'm still in the yellow ball sprite. Those are the costumes. We probably don't need these costumes, but um, let me do a, a look thing first. I'm going to come back because we're going to change the costume of the yellow ball eventually, but the looks. And I'm going to grab which costume to. There we go, and we have Paul that one right there. Switch costume two, and this little um, carrot here gives you a drop down to allow you to choose the costumes that we looked at before. And so there's the yellow ball. I'll choose that one. So that's all I want to happen. When I click on the green flag, I want that ball to turn to yellow. And there you go. So so far, not much going on. Nothing, in fact, going on for the blue ball whatsoever. But we're just coding for the yellow uh, sprite right now. So again, there's the first action that's going to take place for the yellow ball. We want to do the flip card idea. Um, so what I'm going to do is get another event block. And this time, when the sprite is clicked, see that one right there? Again, there's the round dome on top. It tells me it's an initiator one. It's going to happen at the same time as when the, um, I'm not sure. It's going to happen when it's clicked, when the sprite is clicked only whatever commands I put under here are going to be executed. So again, I'm going to use the switch um, costume to go to the looks again, purple. Switch costume two. 
because when I click on that, I want it to switch to the other costume, like I said. Um, and we should probably deal with that other costume at this point. So again, I'm still in the sprite for the yellow ball. I go to the costume. I'm going to leave these other colors in, like I said. Sorry if it's confusing. Now, this costume, the yellow ball, I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate it. Again, I pressed right click and I did duplicate, and you can see a second one appeared for me. And it thankfully named it yellow two for me. It just stuck a number two in there. So perfect. I have the second yellow ball. Um, and what I'd like to do is put something on the yellow ball so that when my user clicks the ball, we want to have it flip around kind of and give us the new situation. So the, the new situation is going to be a text. So I'm going to go to the text block right there. And I'm just going to write out the word yellow in purple. That's going to be awkward. I'll highlight it. And there's my fill tool right there. I'm just going to drag it over to be black for today. And then this is a move tool. Move yeah, the word yellow right over the yellow ball. So we have two sprites. One is the blank yellow one. Hopefully, when I click on that, it's going to change to do this and show me the yellow word written out there. So that's a good start. And we're going to go back to coding. And again, we're still on the yellow sprite right there. And you remember how we had the costume start with the yellow. Now we're going to switch to, and we can click on the drop down menu on this purple block. There you can see yellow two is in my choices because I created it in costumes before. So there's yellow number two. Um, that's all good. So when I click the green flag, I have the yellow ball. When I click on the yellow ball, I have the word yellow that appears. And now I'm going to put some timing in because I'd like it to show me the solution, but then disappear after so that it come back, it'll come back to the beginning. Um, so what I'm going to do with that is wait a little bit because I need some time to see the word yellow pop up. Um, so I'm going to use a wait command, and that's going to be in a control um, button right here. So I'll go to control, hit C, wait one second, I'll drag that over. You could key in the length of time that you need. If it's something long to read, you might need a little more time, but I think one second is going to be fine for this. So there's my control. And what I'd like it to do, like I said, is come back to be the first blank yellow ball again after my my audience, the participant has seen. So remember the purple look blocks. I can go over here, grab that again, switch costume, and we're going to switch it back to our drop down, the first yellow. And so that's pretty much it. I'll hit the green flag just to reset everything. There you go, the yellow ball. When I click on it, I get the word yellow for a second, and then it disappears again. So the, um, I mean, a little bit long-winded for wall, but then we can miss some code. So we'll, we'll have a look at what that looks like. So let's do the blue ball. Hopefully, this is not too quick. Everybody's uh, hanging in there. So for the blue ball, Um, what I'm going to do is you can see the grayed out blue ball in this corner. This is where my code's going to go, and there is no code for the blue ball yet. So ideally, code to this, the yellow ball, to appear um, for my blue ball. So here, here's a little short I'm going to go back to the yellow ball to a nut so that with the one clicked, right? Remember initially when the green flag was clicked, we wanted the first color to appear. So I'm going to drag and drop that over, not onto the yellow ball, but onto the blue sprite. And you can see it kind of jiggles and turns grayish there. So I'll drop it. And now when I go to the blue sp sprite, I must have not dropped it properly. Let me try that again. There you go. So when I go to the blue sprite, there's the 
remembering that we don't want yellow. We already labeled our blue, remembering costumes before. We labeled it. So I'm gonna choose that one. And again, we're gonna have to go back and put in the second one, write in the word blue, all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm just gonna show you one other way to copy code over. So back to the yellow sprite. I also wanna copy this chunk of code over to the blue sprite. Another cool feature, when you're building big chunks of code, it gets tedious to code a blank screen. So down here, there's a backpack and you can see I have a bunch of stuff in the backpack it's, I use this frequently. And so all everything I've ever drawn. So another option to copy code from the yellow ball over to the blue ball is I can drag code into the backpack. You can see it turns gray. I drop it. And unfortunately, they're not labeled very well, but I know that the most recent thing dropped into the backpack goes to the most left area right here so that that's the code down here. So I'm gonna go over to the blue sprite. We have the code from before that I showed you a drag and drop of, and I'm gonna go into the backpack and pull out the code and drop it on to the work area for the blue, the, uh, blue ball sprite. How to copy code or go with these guys. So again, the yellow sprite, there was my code, all good. The blue sprite needs to be adjusted accordingly. When I hit the green flag, I have it turn blue. That's all great. But here you can see we still have yellow and yellow. That's going to be a problem in my code. So I'm going to go and change that. And you'll see I only have blue as a costume option in my drop down. Um, so you'll remember, I hope, I need to go back, still in the blue sprite, into costumes. And remember this one we created, we only had the blue sprite available. So I'm going to do like I did before. So I know it's fast, but it it's like uh, it's becoming repetitious now. We're getting faster at what we're accomplishing. I can right click on that first one, duplicate it. It gives me blue number two now. And remember what we did before, we used a text box. And this time we'll write blue like we did for yellow before. We'll use the select tool right there. Oops, didn't like that. Drag blue over to the ball. There we go, we have two nice costumes. We'll go back to the coding and fix up our drop down menu. So again, this one was okay, we had blue. This one was going to yellow number two. You can see now we have blue number two because we created the costume. I'll select that. Remember the delay of one second, we want blue to appear. It's gonna delay for one second and then it's gonna come back to the original blue one. There you go. So let's see if it works. We'll hit the green flag on the blue one if I click. There you go, blue for a second and disappears. On yellow, yellow for a second and yellow disappears and so on. Um, so that we're getting going uh, pretty good. I'll add one more, just a, a pink one, just to walk you through uh, one last addition. Um, and then I'll show you what it could look like in a more complex version, but that's kind of like a wrapped up, um, like the cooking show where the pizza is already cooked and you pull it out of the oven. I'll show you the cooked pizza uh, just to get a sense of how we can make something flip. We'll give the appearance that it's flipping. It's not just a, a, a word that's appearing. So here we go. We had the blue one and the pink one. Let's use, I'm gonna use the yellow sprite again and go into costume. And the reason I did that is I already left all these other colors in place. So what I'm gonna do actually on the sprite is right click, duplicate. There it is again, ball number three. Hmm. Didn't like that, I'll right click. And duplicate. Okay, oh, I must have hit the X on the duplicate. So there it is again, another yellow one. Here it is right here. And it's doing the code from before you saw the word yellow appear. That's all okay. I'm going to go into the costumes, which I opened before, and it's not going to be a yellow one. I'm going to X out of yellow, blue. I'll leave the pink one and skip down to green, click, then click on the trash can. 
and that trash can. And there we go. We have the pink one again. And you, you get the idea. You know what we're going to do. We would duplicate this costume. We would write the word with text pink across it. And we'd have the exact same situation as we did for the blue uh, sprite and the yellow sprite and so on. And so we've created kind of a flip card. We didn't finish up the pink one, but you get the idea. I don't want to hold you too long. I know I'm running into time. And so what I want to show you is a little more advanced thing just to make it look flipped. So I'm going to go on to this tab right here. There you go. And there's a piece of code here. So you can see I went through all six colors. Um, and these ones, when I click on them, you get the word appearing and then it disappears after. And something I did for the yellow one was to give it a little bit of a shake that happens, right? It looks like it's shaking and then the word appears that, to simulate a flip kind of thing. And the way I did that was the same code that you saw before, but I added in um, an extra control feature here. So I did a repeat block. I'll take these out. Took a repeat block. I made it repeat five times. I could choose as many times as I want. And then I simply use a change size. So I shrunk the thing by 50%. I waited a second right there. And then I stretched the thing by 50% again. So it's just a shrink, stretch, shrink, shrink, stretch, and so on. Five times gives this nice little impression that it's flipping and then the, the word appears. So that's an example of taking it to another level. Um, that's pretty much it for the example for the color ones quite similar to what you saw in Scratch Junior. Um, and then just to make connections to other subjects, because it, it's not only elementary, although the example I showed you today could probably be cycle three elementary. I think they could hand, handle this, but definitely in high school. Um, what I've done here is something very similar. So I did the area of objects and, and for the circle, I did the area of it, the cir circumference and the, the diameter. And the idea is, when I click on the shape, my flip that would happen, my flip card would actually give me the definition and then disappear. I left it for a little longer time. Same thing, area of a rectangle is going to give you length times width. So a formula and then it disappears. The area of a circle, when I click on it, pi times r squared uh, will give you the area of the circle and so on. All the formulas are there. And so a little bit more work, a little ex more expensive. Definitely high school students can, can appreciate this um, and apply vocabulary that they learned, all that kind of stuff. And definitely across subjects. I gave the math example, but you could see this in language arts, um, in sciences and social sciences. There's so many possibilities with where you can go with this. So I think I have definitely exhausted my time. I know we want to run out of here uh, sooner, but I'm going to pass it over to Stacy, and maybe we can look at a, a remix, another layer of what Scratch can do. Thanks, Craig. Um, so one of my favorite features about Scratch is actually the the ability to remix. Uh, to remix, uh, what you what that means is that you take a project or code that already exists that someone else might have created, and you can dive in and make adjustments and edits to make the project suit your own needs. Um, so you can see right now I'm on the Scratch MIT general website, um, and I'm just going to click the explore button at the top uh, next to the create button that Craig had showed you previously. And here I see a list of all kinds of projects, probably millions of projects that users across the world created. Uh, so I'm going to click in the search bar and put flashcards because that was our theme for today. And you can see here, there's a ton of different examples of projects that people created uh, used about flashcards. So you can go in, you can kind of see what might suit your class, your needs. Um, and for today, I'm trying to think, going back to my teaching days of teaching elementary social science, the living world, my favorite kind of topic to teach with students while they're discovering their animals and what class uh, classification of those animals. So I'm going to click here. I see one that I like, um, and I did put the link in the slideshow today. 
And I'm just going to go click on the remix button that's green here on the top. Great. So now you see the interface kind of like Craig did and all the code is there. Um, but, you know, I don't really like tri triantulas. I can't even say that word. I want to change it to some different kind of animals here. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I see that that tri like triantula, the spider, I'm just going to call it a spider, is selected. Um, so I'm going to go into costumes. So I'm going to change that image. Um, and to do that, I'm going to add an extra costume. So down here at the bottom, I see the little cat and I'm going to go to upload a costume. And I kind of cheated today. I already downloaded some images of animals that I liked. Um, and I'm going to select a donkey. I like donkeys. They're kind of like horses. Perfect. So here I have my picture of my animal. And now I'm going to go out and I'm actually going to delete the two sprites that they put in. I want to get rid of the spider. So now I want to make a flashcard. So I'm actually going to add another sprite. So again, I'm going to go down to the bottom with the little cat plus button. And this time I'm going to click on the paintbrush. Yeah. Now I want it to look kind of like a traditional uh, flashcard. So I'm going to pick, click on the square. And I'm going to draw myself a square for a flashcard. And maybe I want the student to identify what is the class of the animal. So here on the hex button, I know that donkeys are mammals. Oop, I need to change my color of my text. You can see that I'm typing. Here we go. So here I have donkey is a mammal. And maybe unlike a traditional flashcard that's two-sided, maybe I'm going to ask my students to also include a fact about mammals because I want to get them to go further. So again, I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to add a costume using the paint feature. I'm going to draw my square. Sorry, I know this is going fast. I'm trying to fit everything into before 4.30. And I'm going to add my text, change the color from white so you can actually see what I'm writing. And I'm going to write an interesting fact. So maybe mammals feed their babies with milk, like in the picture. Perfect. So now that I have all my sprites, all my sides of my flashcards, I'm going to go back to the code. And because it's a remix, most of my code is already done. But because I changed my sprites, my costumes, I'm going to switch the costumes here. I just realized that in my rush, I forgot to label my costume. So I have my donkey here. I'm going to write this one as my title of my costume as mammal. I'm going to go down to my third one and I'm going to name it fact. If you were doing all of the animals, which I'm not going to have time to write today. You might also want to name them with the name of the animal. Then I go back to my code. I'm going to say here, instead of the spider, it's going to be the picture of the donkey to start. And then when the sprite is clicked, it's going to first change into mammal so that the students would know what kind of classification the animal was. Then it is going to move into the fact. Okay. Perfect. And then also, because I want it to be a flashcard and go back to the original, I'm actually going to have to add again that it's going to wait maybe three seconds because I want to have people to have time to read the fact. And again, in the looks, I know I'm going really fast. I'm going to switch the costume back to the original donkey picture. So now if I play my code, I click on the picture of my donkey, it says mammal, and then it switches to the fact and then back again. Now, maybe you want your students to really go the next level and you know like your students are in French or in English and you wanna also encourage them to learn new vocabulary in their second or third language. So this time I'm gonna make my flashcard say something. So I am going to go again in the looks question and I'm going to add after it says mammal, it's going to say a question to my students. What is 
mammal in French. Okay. But then I need to tell them the answer. And me, I'm not very good at French. I'm from Nova Scotia. It's still work in progress. But luckily, Scratch is going to tell me the answer. So after that, it's going to say something. I'm going to go down to the bottom. There's a little envelope here at the bottom. And I'm going to click on the translate button. Now here I have some new kind of coding blocks. And right here it says translate blank into oh, hello to Dutch. I'm going to drag that block here in the space section. I'm going to type in mammal. And then I'm going to switch the language from Dutch into French. Perfect. Now I'm going to show my code. I'm going to make a big screen. I'm going to click on the donkey. It says, what is the mammal in French? And it gives me the answer and then the fact. So just an example very quickly in 10 minutes. I know it's fast about a way that you could maybe go a bit further with the idea of flashcards with your students across the curriculum. Um, also, I did a more example, a bigger, a full example here of what it might uh, look like. Again, guess the animal classification um, with all the different animals here um, that I can share afterwards uh, in the resources on the slides. Perfect. So I know that's a super quick overview. Are there any questions? questions about Scratch um, after seeing Craig's code along and an extension using a remix. Yeah, I have a question. Um, if you were to work with grade two students who've got no experience with Scratch or Scratch Junior, my gut is telling me start with Scratch Junior, just but but then again, I don't know. So what would you suggest? I would definitely suggest to start with Scratch Junior. I don't know. I see Craig and Lexi nodding as well. I've used Scratch Junior uh, even with secondary two, secondary or secondary two, elementary cycle two, cycle three, just to kind of get familiar with uh like the blocks and sequencing, and then you can move into Scratch pretty quickly after seeing it in Scratch Junior. Okay, thank you. Any other ideas, contradictory ideas, or anything to add to that answer? No, I think uh, I would just, yeah, kind of back that up too. I've used Scratch Junior with my grade one and two, um, and then I did use it with a an older class, but those students had um, various special needs. Um, but I think even a grade three or four class, if if they're brand new to coding, Scratch Junior is a great way to get started. Um, and, and what's really nice, I think what we tried to show here today is that Scratch builds on Scratch Junior. So, you know, if they get familiar with the kind of image pictorial version of it, then moving to Scratch will be a, a, a more seamless transition, hopefully. Thank you. That's very helpful. Perfect. Um, and Craig and Lexi, feel free to jump in and speak to any of these resources too. Um, so here are some resources for Scratch. Uh, the first one is a le learning resource list. So if you're on the Scratch website, there are a ton of different tutorials, different project ideas that can you can do for yourself and also walk through with students. Uh, there's some fun ones like animating your name, which are really engaging uh, for students of all levels. There's also a breakdown of the Scratch interface, uh, the educators page, which Oh, thanks, Liana. I just saw your message in the chat. Um, about, um, the educator page has a bunch of different resources for teachers across the globe. And then there's an explanation, too, um, of what the different blocks mean. Um, we have uh, our team has put together a Padlet with resources and examples of different Scratch projects that you could remix across the curriculum for different levels. Uh, so I encourage you to check that out if you're interested in pursuing using Scratch with your students. Uh, 
Uh, we've also put together a teaching with Scratch HyperDoc, which has a lot of good tips if you're just getting started with Scratch about how to create your own teacher Scratch account and creating accounts for your students. Also how to help students uh, log into Scratch for the first time. We also have a bunch of different Scratch resources and resources for different uh, coding platforms, robotics on our Digital Competency in Action website. So we encourage you to check that out. And this is unfortunately our last planned code along so far of this year. Uh, we have recorded our previous code alongs. There's some on Turtle Stitch and let me see if I can name them all. Maybe Lexi and Craig can help me. Um, Microbit, Micro yeah. Makey Makey, and Turtle Art. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So if you want to check those out, you're interested in more digital competency tools for your classroom, uh, you can check out the Learn YouTube channel and view those recordings as well. There's also um, the code alongs from last year, which include different elements of Scratch Junior and I think even some Scratch as well. So um, if you didn't see what you were looking for today, there again, like we mentioned, for both Scratch Junior and Scratch, there are an infinite number of projects that you could create. So if you're looking for something different, um, that would be a good place to look as well. But it doesn't need to be the end, even though it's our last code along. Um, we could still keep the conversation going for sure, so that we have a Scratch Ed meetup group uh, for Quebec, and it was initially intended for Quebec educators, um, but it's really grown into over 250 members, and that includes colleagues from across the country um, and even from across the world sometimes. And uh, when we do get together, obviously all 250 people don't attend every time, but we, we have about a dozen people join us each time. Um, and we do this a few times a year. We'll put notice out to, to let you uh, know about it. And we'd love to have more people come and join us. Um, it's pretty absolutely organized. Um, I think unconference is the word that gets used. Um, so we bring our Scratch experiences together and we build an agenda based on who attends. So there's no, no real right or wrong or any obligation that way. Um, and sometimes we, we break out into uh, interests or comfort levels. If there's more advanced participants and less advanced, that's all good. We break out and accommodate everybody. Um, but in the end, we always try and remix something together. And then we share those creations back at, at the end of the session. So um, please join us for those. If you're interested in continuing your Scratch uh, experience, that's a good spot to do it. If while this is our last code along, we have a bunch of different other upcoming events. So. Uh, there is a link there to our calendar, and we encourage you to check out, see if anything else interests you, and uh, register, because we hope to see you guys at all of our events. <laughs>